Having difficulty with orientation during indirect ophthalmoscopy? Look no further. Follow the three golden rules and you will never get confused again. This is the Amsler chart with markings in Roman numerals for the meridians. It would be helpful to put markings with respect to the eye as well as the markings for superior, inferior, nasal and temporal orientations with respect to the eye that is being examined. This makes the process a whole lot easier. So these are the charts and fundus images with their respective anatomic orientations. The three golden rules to follow are 1. Invert the chart with respect to the patient. 2. Draw what you see. And 3. The orientation of the chart is akin to the actual eye orientation. This third rule is for orientation in real time and we shall see that a little later. These first two rules hold good regardless of whether you are inverted, sideways or upright with respect to the patient. So let's say we are examining the right eye and you are examining the patient who is lying down from the head end. Place the chart next to the patient's head and make sure it is inverted with respect to the patient. Now do the indirect ophthalmoscopy and note what you see. Draw on the chart exactly what you see as you see it. To interpret the fundus, keep the chart upright and you have an anatomical correlation to what the patient has. Now let's say you are examining the patient facing her. Again place the chart next to the patient and invert it. Do the examination and note what you see. Draw on the chart whatever you see as you see it. For interpretation, turn the chart right side up and you have the correct orientation of the fundus. Now, what if you want an orientation in real time as you are doing the indirect? Or what if your mentor is standing next to you during the procedure and asks you where exactly you see the lesion? This is where you follow the third golden rule. That is, the orientation of the chart is akin to the actual eye orientation. Let's see with an example. You are examining the left eye of this patient from the head end. This is the chart for the left eye which you place upside down with respect to the patient. During the procedure, you see the disc and a lesion. What is the orientation? Forget how your patient is oriented. The chart is right side up. So what you are seeing is an image of the left eye as if the patient is seated right side up. So the lesion you are seeing is superonasal to the optic disc. Let's take another example. You are examining the right eye from the right side of the patient. Let's orient the chart upside down with respect to the patient. This is the patient's fundus. Look at the chart. Now what we are seeing is the fundus of the patient's right eye as if the patient is oriented towards the chart. So this is the optic disc. This is the macula temporally and this is a coloboma inferior to the disc. Let's say you see another lesion in this area. See its orientation in the chart. It is situated superotemporal to the disc. If you need to see peripheral to this new lesion, since this is the superotemporal quadrant, ask the patient to look more towards her own actual superotemporal quadrant. That is, you ask her to look up and to the right then follow the principle of golden rule 3 as you continue to examine the patient. 